HBCU is a historically black college and university. It is a university that is for us and by us created to be an environment where we can be ourselves and be comfortable and learn at the same time. Um, and it's a known fact that if you put people in a room that are like each other with the same, <clears throat> with, <clears throat> who, who all look alike and can and have the same common goal, that it makes it more comfortable for us. And we succeed more because when we leave there, we're so confident. Um, and that's kind of what I see in a lot of HBCU people, the confidence of it. Um, but the support, not only while you're there, but the support afterwards too. Like I said, they still supported me. I mean, to this day. On the Ball Podcast. <laughs>going on ballers and welcome to another episode of the beyond the ball podcast i'm your host jonathan jones and today as always we have an exciting guest but man with, with this particular guest me, me and her go way back way way back which is it's it's, it's so funny um and, and, and we're gonna we're gonna get to today's guest in just one moment but just want to just do some do some groundwork and just lay down just what the purpose of this podcast is. And the purpose is to ultimately provide stories, strategies, and successes for student athletes and those who are just going through that level of transition, right? Just trying to figure out what's next. So that's the purpose of this podcast. And today I'm glad just, just to have on uh, my, my longtime friend, Miss Allison Ray Lawson, who is the CEO and the founder of Ray Lawson Enterprises, LLC, among so many other things. So Allison, how, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. It's about 1 p.m. And uh, as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to take me a nap. So I've done, I'm doing <laughs> pretty well. Dope, dope, dope. Welcome to adulthood. That's so funny because I used to hate going to sleep. I used to hate taking naps as a kid, but now like I plan, like I'll plan a time where I'm just going to lay it down and it's just, I'm not doing nothing and I don't feel bad about it at all. Yep. I take yeah. a nap a day. Yeah. I mean, Hey, take a nap a day. <laughs> it keeps the stress away. Okay. <laughs> I mean that, 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 that really is it. But, I, but Allison, I mean, I, I introduced you, but, but what did I miss? Because I didn't cover everything. I just gave just a, just a slight slight preview, but 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 tell, tell the good people out there what I missed. Talk to them. Yeah, so I am the CEO of Ray Lawson Enterprise and Ray Lawson Enterprise 2.0, which um, is a franchisee of two 7-Eleven convenience stores with gas located in Arlington, Texas on the corner of Matlock and 20. You got the gas. Hey. <laughs> hey. You know, I got to say that because people always ask me, do you have gas or just a convenience store? I'm like, no, there's gas. <laughs> no, she's she's got it all. Whatever you need, like it's it's it's, it's all there. It's all there, man. So t walk walk me back, walk me back, Allison, because I remember because you know just just seeing when the contest was going on, and I remember you know making sure I voted for you, and then also telling other people to vote for you. But like when when this thing started, did you was this something that you always dreamed of? Was this something that was just a thought? Like walk walk me through that. No, I actually never thought about it. Um, my father was a franchisee of three um, McDonald's whenever I was growing up in the Oak Cliff, Dallas area. Um, my mother's an entrepreneur, um, a great realtor. Um, and so they're entrepreneurs, but it never like really dawned on me. I thought with all my educational background, I should probably just continue to climb up the um, ladder in corporate America. Um, and I think one day in corporate America, I was sitting there, I just felt completely disrespected. And I was like, there has to be something else out there for me. Um, and so I just started looking into franchises, just literally one day, just randomly said, you know what? Like, let me see what I can figure out. And I started looking some up and one of them was 7-Eleven and I just gave them a call and it just kind of started the process of it. Um, and it just kind of blew up bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Um, of course, I didn't know that I would enter a contest. Um, I sincerely was just trying to purchase the store. Um, but I didn't know that I was going to enter a contest. I didn't know it was literally going to be America voting. I didn't know I was going to win. I didn't know what it entailed. And I certainly didn't see it being as big as it is today on so many different platforms. So I'm just gracious to the process of it. So, I mean, so you was almost like American Idol, right? Like the people, <laughs> <laughs> people voting in and you yeah. were, what? Yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. Every day I would wake up and I would, I keep telling myself, I wish it would have only been a week because I was exhausted by the end of that two-week time. Um, but every day I would get up and I literally would say, 
came to a point where like Facebook blocked me because they were like they thought I was spam. Mm. Um, and so I kept trying to like every day remind the people who had commented on the photo before that to go ahead and vote or you know, you know, if, if somebody reposted it, I'd go on their repost and comment on everybody to read. So it just got to a point where Facebook was like, We think you're spam. So I have about four Facebook accounts out there that <laughs> <laughs> I just had to keep recreating a new page. Like it's not spam, like I'm trying to win. Um, and then of course, you know, Dion England from Channel Four picked it up. Um, Hampton University picked it up. Uh, the whole Delta Sigma Theta um, group picked it up. So everybody was just picking it up and sharing it, and it just got bigger than really what I thought it was going to get. So. <laughs> wow! Wow! Well, okay, so when you say so when you say it got bigger than what you what you thought it was going to going to get, are you talking about the the voting process? You talking about the whole process? Or are you talking about just going back to the piece about you looking at franchises? All of it. Um, I think that me looking at franchises, I would have never thought that I would be at two stores, um, let alone one. It was just a thought process. Um, but the contest actually awarded me an opportunity to get a better store um, and get more um, more knowledge and more acknowledgement, too, in order to get two stores. Um, but I think also the contest just kind of blew up to more than what I thought it was going to be. Because um, I think the year before that, they did a veterans one because I was the first women's contest. They did a veterans one before that and the guy won with like 300 votes. So to get, see me then come in and win with 45,000 votes, I kept saying like, <laughs> I told someone living like when they released it, I was like, are you sure? I was like, I know a lot of people. And they're like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. Like, I, like yeah, it'll be fun competition. I was like, okay. So it ended, up, <laughs> it ended up going viral and everywhere. So it was a good look for everybody. But yeah, I was very, um, I wasn't aware that it was going to get like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was super dope just to see, because I remember looking at it myself and just seeing like the other people who were in the ranking. And yeah, you you definitely, um, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, you brought- you 2,000 votes, so- yeah, you brought the city out, you brought the people out. And I mean, people showed up and supported and people don't, people don't always support in this way. Mm -mm, they don't, they don't. And I think that that's what, that's what made me feel so good about it is that like everybody like supported it. And that's not, to me, that's not, that's crazy, you know, um, to have all of Hampton University and their administration, you know, send it out via email to have Delta Sigma Theta and the huge group of like 300,000 were like people, like people I don't even know, sorors I don't even know were like posting it and reposting it and making all their friends do it. Um, you know, my high school, my mater, Bishop Dunn, they were into it. It just, it was just, it literally was crazy. <laughs> wow, wow. So you keep bringing up and, and making mention of Hampton. So I'm, I'm curious just to ask, like, just talk about Talk about like the support of an HBCU, and 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 the reason I want to the reason I want to ask that is because I I went to a PWI and and now being removed, you know, being a few years removed and having the opportunity to to partner with with some HBCUs and even go down and like speak at Southern, mm -hmm. I've just realized that it creates a different experience and mm -hmm. and just the level of support. So talk about that with you, you know, being 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 a, a HBCU grad and you know going to, you know the Hampton University. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that. I try to stay away from this conversation because it can get so deep. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. That's what we, that's why we're here. Um, so, and, and HBCU is a historically black college and university. It is a university that is for us and by us created to be an environment where we can be ourselves and be comfortable and learn at the same time. Um, and it's a known fact that if you put people in a room that are like each other with the same, <clears throat> with, <clears throat> Who, who all look alike and can and have the same common goal that it makes it more comfortable for us. And we succeed more because when we leave there, we're so confident. Um, and that's kind of what I see in a lot of HBCU people, the confidence of it. Um, but the support, not only while you're there, but the support afterwards too. Like I said, they still supported me. I mean, to this day, you know what I mean? I just got into uh, Hampton University top 40 under 40 society. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where like, they don't, they don't leave you. Um, and then not only does Hampton not leave you, but like the Hampton family doesn't leave you either. Um, I have people right now who comment on my page. I was like, I'm a pirate too. I'm a pirate. I never met them a day in my life, but it's a family thing because we're all pirates. Um, and so I think that that's what HBCUs are there for. I mean, it's not just Hampton. I see it. I mean, Prairie View, you can't tell Prairie View people anything. So <laughs> um, Howard, especially since um, Kamala won, you can't tell people. You can't tell Howard anything. Um, and so it's just a thing, Morehouse, Spelman, 
Um, it's a place, and I we used to joke whenever we were there, is that like HBCUs literally brainwash you into believing that you are the cream of the crop. That way, when you go into any room, you're confident. Um, and I used to joke about it, but it sincerely is true. I, I will argue you down on a subject that I know nothing about just because I have the confidence and the voice to do so, period. So um, I owe it all to HBCUs. And that's not to say that any, I mean, you went to a PWI and that's not to say that um, you didn't have a good experience or, you know, you're not going to be successful. I can only speak for what I know. And what mm -hmm. I know is, is what HBCU did for me. I mean, it literally changed my life. Man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm trying to tell you that one time I went down to, well, I've been down to Southern like a few times and, and, and I also had the opportunity just to, to partner with, with Howard here recently, mm -hmm. um, just this, this past year, but, but the support there is, is it's just real because it, it really is that family dynamic because they, that people, they, they bring you in, they welcome you in, and then they also hold you accountable. Yeah. And we're all we have in the end. So I always say that. So you know, if, if there's one people, this with this one group of people that are gonna love me forever, it's gonna be Hampton people. So, man, super dope, super dope. So just keep keeping it keeping it consistent with support. I I wanna because I I was I went back and was was watching one one of the videos and and uh, just as you were you know going through that process and with with Seven Eleven, but just just talk about a, a few of the shoulders that that you stand upon, right? Like a, like. And, and, and the reason I want to say that, because I'm, I'm specifically just driving towards like the African American Museum right here. I'm, I'm kind of driving towards the African American Museum because watching that, watching that video and knowing just growing up in that first space, uh, yeah. just, 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 just talk, talk a little bit about that for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I created a video um, and part of the contest was, so first and foremost, let me just say the contest wasn't, they were just giving away 7-Elevens and it was like Oprah, like you get a 7-Eleven, you get a 7-Eleven, you get... <laughs> It wasn't like that, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of things that I had to go through and people really fail to realize that. They fail to realize two things. One, it wasn't just a popularity contest. And two, I still had to pay a lot of money. So that's where people get twisted. Um, but uh, so after you go through the regular franchisee process that all franchisees go through, because at the end of the day, they're gonna give you a 7-Eleven, but they're not giving it to just anybody. They wanna make sure they would have picked you to be a franchisee anyway. Mm. Giving somebody who would have already been in their category a store. Um, and so after all of that, um, we had to make a two minute video as to why we thought that we should be and why we thought that we should be a franchisee. Um, and then after that, America voted. Um, like I said, I went with 45,000 votes, but really my video was pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. And now I can kind of toot my own horn because it's two years later. Um, and I try to remain as humble as possible up until now. Um, but it pretty, it really was um, a pretty dope video and I wish we could play it, but, um, I, I, I hear it now and it still gives me chills to like hear my speech um but literally the reason why i wanted to be a franchisee is because i wanted to be that same person to other people that my community was to me um and i wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for of course my parents um but then also they put me within a community that also helped raise me and make me to who i am today so what you're referring to is um the part where i gave specifics and there's one leonard jones um, he is a golf professional of, he, well, he was a golf professional of two um, city uh, golf courses in Dallas. He taught me the game of golf and many others. Um, his name was Leonard Jones. Uh, he had a minority golf foundation and he taught us the etiquette of golf as well as how to play it. And all of us went to college on golf scholarships and most of us went to HBCUs afterwards. Um, and so, like I said, I wouldn't have gone to Hampton if I wasn't on a scholarship. Um, so that awarded me that. Um, but what you're referring to specifically is Dr. Harry Robinson at the African American Museum in Grant Park. Um, he gave me my first job as a junior docent whenever I was 14 years old. He really believed in uh, kids, like his thing is kids. He loves kids and um, he really believed in kids. And um, although we probably weren't the best employees, <laughs> 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 you were there. Um, but um, he really believed, and so he gave me my first job. He kind of taught me, you know, etiquette and poise and love for arts. And um, now I have tattoos with the same art that was in the museum, you know. Um, but people like him who took us under his wing and made, kind of molded us into who we are today. Um, and I kind of just want to be that same person to other people because I think it's admirable that people like him and Leonard Jones are doing that for kids and still to this day doing that for kids. So. Um, that was kind of my platform was that, um, and that's kind of like what made me win, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. I mean, Robinson said I made him famous. 
Like uh, you're already famous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, I mean, but I, but I will say I think you might have, you know, add, add a little bit to that fire. But yeah, do, I mean, Doc, Dr. Harry Robinson is, you know, just 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 phenomenal, you mm -hmm. know, and and I mean, I I never realized how dynamic or how much of a leader he was mm -hmm. until like now, like looking oh, back. Oh yeah. Oh as my a kid, goodness. As a kid, we took it for granted for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things. Like, if if you're exposed to somebody so often, you, you they're they're normalized, right? right? Despite what all they've accomplished and despite right. everything that they've done, it's like, oh, well, this is just such and such. But then you look back and like you see this man in articles, and you see this man right. in magazines, and you're like, right. oh my goodness, you're you're like. That's how I felt about this. my dad growing up. Like everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Like really, I mean, I didn't I didn't really notice. Like I just know that like this is what I was, I was born into McDonald's. So like I didn't. I didn't see any like the big deal about it, but I mean, a black man in the '70s owning three McDonald's is a huge, is a huge thing. So it's just one of those things where like you look back on it and you're like, I just wish I would have absorbed so much more, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's definitely so accurate, and I think that's something that applies so relevant right now. Is just being in a position to where just being like present and being like aware of where we are and just being intentional. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really being intentional. Yeah. So I I, I've, so I, I've, I've been seeing, I've been seeing like all these articles, and I've been seeing like all these people mention you, and you know share, share like what, what you, what you've done with Seven Eleven, and and how mm -hmm. you've sold the most. Uh, is it Black Black Girl Magic? Is is the name of the the it's one? The, it's one of the collections, but it's the McBride sisters, two Black sisters, um, uh, who have who own their own wine company, the largest um, Black owned wine company in the United States. Yeah, yeah. So with, with that happening, and then you getting like all this notoriety, like, how, do, how does that make you feel now after you went through that process? And just like you said, there's a lot of other things that people did not see and did not understand, which I want to I want to go there first. And then we can we can get this other part. But you said you still you said they weren't just giving it because I thought it was like, oh, they gifted you a 7-Eleven oh, franchise. No. no, no. I had to go through the regular franchising process. You know what I mean? Like everybody goes through it. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like they want to make sure that even though they're, that you're still the right person to have a store. You know what I mean? Like they don't want to just put me in a popularity contest and America pick somebody who's not even qualified. You know what I mean? So like you had to go through the first whole process first, like turning in all your bank accounts, turning in, you know, giving your credit history, all this. I mean, you have, to do a, you have to do a lot of tax returns for like years. You have to do a lot of things just to get a store. Um, and so that was the first process. And I think that that actually weeded out a lot of people. Um, and then they came up with the finalists. And then we made a video. Um, so I think people just thought like, and then also people thought they're like, oh, you know, you get a store and then that's it. No, they pay for the building. They don't pay for the franchising cost. That's the Holy other big, <laughs> big beast. <laughs> so again, that helps weed out more people because some people can't afford that, that amount. So um, it really, but after that, it really was a fair shot at like what America thought. Mm, wow, wow. And then not not to mention, just like you said, not to mention that you, you know, you got you got your bachelor's degree in what? Business management. Yeah. From yeah. University. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And then what? And then what? Like, what are your what are your other two degrees in? I'm just curious. Ah, <laughs> you going there? Um, I have a master's of business administration from uh, Texas A&M University Commerce, and I have a master's of accounting from the University of Miami. Oh wow! Yeah, you definitely you you had you had your ducks in a row. You had your ducks in a row. It it it, it makes it makes it. It makes a lot more sense even now. Not even makes a lot more sense now, but that even that further adds to your credibility, just in regards to how qualified I was. However, I got those degrees thinking that I was going to work my way up mm -hmm. in corporate America. I probably could have just done with one <laughs> <laughs> if I knew I was going to own a Seven Eleven. That just needed one, possibly none. But um, yeah, that that was me thinking that my life was going to be one way. Mm. Um, and then I always say the Lord laughs and switches up things completely and it's going to be a different way. So I'm still thankful for the process. Just could have done it with a lot more student, with a lot less student loan debt. Mm. Amen to that. So, <laughs> so you've got these two 7-Eleven franchises under your belt. 
like mm -hmm. where where do you see like what it what is next for you i hate that question um i always have that question in interviews because i really have no idea just like i had no idea i'd be at two just like i had no idea i'd be at one just like i had no idea i still wouldn't be sitting in corporate america so um i don't really set goals for myself um because either one i'll be disappointed um, mm. i didn't reach it or two, it's like, what if I set too low of a goal and I could have done so much better um, and it kind of limits me. So I don't really, uh, I've never had goals. So I don't really know like where my life is going. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, but I always say that I am a huge opportunity. At any given time, I am going to like capitalize on any opportunity. Um, that's just kind of where I've made it to, to where I am today is just like every little opportunity I see, let me, let me get it. Um, so where am I going next? I have no idea, but let that opportunity open and, and I guarantee you all have it. I love that, but I'm still digging deeper. I'm still digging deeper. What, 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 what is Allison Ray Lawson passionate about? On the side, I do um, motivational speaking. Um, and so I speak to, I've done, I, you know, I, of course I charge for keynotes um, and I've done about four or five keynote speaking um, engagements, uh, one of them was at DeSoto, <laughs> their um, female leadership conference that they do every single year for the DeSoto ISD. Um, I did it one year and I was super excited. They don't know this and sorry, DeSoto, but that was my first speaking engagement. Um, <laughs> but I killed it. Um, but the year before me, it was Kelly Rowland. So it's like I had to follow Kelly Rowland after. <laughs> Kelly Rowland did the keynote speaking and then the next year they're like, hey, we really want you. And I'm like, so, um, <laughs> but I killed it. I killed it. Um, and that kind of was what just peaked it from there. And like, it just kept going. Um, so I do do keynote speaking, but on the side I do, um, I do, I go and I do career days or I go and talk to large bodies of children because I feel like um, they're the next pot of people. Um, and like I said, I, don't, I wouldn't be where I am today if people didn't reach back for me. So like here I am trying to give myself to other people um, but I think it's very important. So I try to gear it around college students and high school students because I can more relate to like their struggles. Um, Cause that's around the age where I started to have a little bit of struggle in life. Um, and things weren't coming as easy as they always had been. So, um, but that's what I'm passionate about is speaking. So once I can get that up and running and don't ask me how many 7-Elevens I'm gonna get cause I have no idea. Um, but I know right now I got two. <laughs> And once those get very, very comfortable to me, then I can get back to motivational speaking. And also once COVID is over, I can get back to motivational speaking even more. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, there's, I think there's definitely an opportunity there. But I, I, want, you, I want you for a second, Allison, just because you, and only because you said what you said. So I'm going to ask what I was going to ask. Okay, uh, hold on real quick. Let me readjust. I'm at, I'm, I always take interviews in my bed so I can be comfortable. Okay, good. go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> I have a heated blanket and everything. I'm so excited. Go ahead. That's so funny. I'll, I'll edit that out. Don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to. I was like, I always tell people this. Oh, that's that's so funny. But you okay? So you said so you said right around like high school, right around college. That was like that was like a like where you started to face just like a little bit of challenge, a little bit of struggle, like a little bit of adversity, whatever it might be. For for like for the high school student out there, or the college student out there that might be going through that that struggle or challenge, adversity, whatever whatever theirs might be, like. Like, what, what would you share with that person to help them matriculate through? Uh, find your talent, you know what I mean? So, like, probably around sophomore year, I stopped making honor roll. Because um, the person that I was, like, don't get me wrong, I'm super smart. Um, and super, super business savvy. But just things just started to fluctuate. Um, classes just got a little bit harder. And also, like, it didn't come as simple. Like, beforehand, mm. I didn't have to study. I didn't have to, you know what I mean? Things just came very, very simple. Um, and so I had to like find who I was and what I was good at. So I joined a bunch of clubs, um, which colleges love to see that you're super involved. Um, and I just became really active. And that's when I realized that my passion is like being active and being in people's faces and like, you know, um, being a really outgoing person, leading crowds. I um, mean, it wasn't so much to me as book smart at that point. It was like, what can, like, let me use my personality to be who I really am destined to be, which is, I mean, currently what I'm doing now. So um, it was just me having to like reevaluate myself, like just reevaluate yourself around that age. And I mean, that's around the age where kids start going to college. And then it's like, I went to college and was in bio, wanted to be a biology major. I got there and I couldn't even pass biology 101. I was like, okay, this isn't gonna work. 
Um, and I just had to figure out like what else I was good in, you know? Um, I knew I like talking to people, so I switched to psychology. Um, then I realized, you know, that wasn't for me, uh, you know? And then I said, well, what's next? And I said, well, let me just graduate and get out with business. And that's just mm. kind of where I took off. So gotcha. I, think, I think that, you know, that me realizing that I was smart just in a different way than what I was planning on doing in life. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's huge because I think so often, depending on where we are, and of course, depending on the, the particular path we take in our life journey, right? Because if, if we're always exposed to people who are entrepreneurs, then entrepreneurship is normal. And if we're always exposed to people who are in academia, then it seems like college is the way. So I, I think, think that, go mm, ahead. No, no, no. You got it. You got it. I was saying, I, I think that in the, in the, and I've never gone here before, but I just thought about it. I just think in the black community too, I think that, um, which is rightfully so, because we've been, you know, through history, we have earned the right to be able to do whatever we want to do. And so all parents want us to get an education. And just like, I want my future kids to get an education as well. So I'm not knocking anything. Um, but I think that in the world of, you know, like in the black community, it's very important that we push our kids to become doctors and lawyers and, you know, um, things that are like a stature with education. Um, and I think sometimes we miss the realm of other things that are out there that could also make us successful, probably will take more work, aren't guaranteed, but mm. our generation wants to do them. Like right now we have the biggest generation of entrepreneurs. And honestly, to hear the wave of like our parents or our grandparents, like that's shaky to them. You know what I mean? Like why do that when you can guarantee to stay in corporate America, you can guarantee to rise, get that government, for, you know, like especially if you work for the government, just keep going up tier to tier. That to them makes sense, it's stable. Um, but at the same time, in our generation, we want to do something different. You know, we want to be entrepreneurs and artists and things like that. And I think that that scares generations before us. So um, I think it's about, and I think there's a, there's a way to balance the best of both worlds. You know, um, there's mm. a way to say that, like, okay, I can get my education. Yes, parents, because you raised me to be this person and because you spent all this money on me, I'll get my education. But I, I, I can find a way to, like, not necessarily have to be a doctor or a lawyer, or, you know, something which is fine. But if you're into arts, find a way to make money in arts with the educational background in which you have. So I think that it's just, it's, a, it's for, for our culture, it's just a little bit different. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, it's funny you even say that because I was, I mean, I go back and forth with my dad uh, here and there, just talking about how sometimes if I was, around college age now, mm -hmm. would I say, and, and this is me speaking, having basically like a house note for student loan debt right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying like, if I know everything that I know right now, would I even consider college being the best decision for me? No, knowing the fact that, that there are people out here who are opening up presence on YouTube and mm -hmm. they're the highest income earner across the YouTube uh, platform. Playing with toys. Playing, like, opening, <laughs> unboxing toys. And you and you and you're generating, you're generating more revenue than a lot of us have ever seen. And yeah. Then, I do, yeah. And I, I think that too, like what if? Um, I think that I still would have gotten one. Just to say that, like, I mean, to to break generational curses. I mm. think I would have gotten one. Um, and then also as a fallback plan. Like if something didn't work out, I at least have a degree to be in corporate America if I wanted to. So I think I would have gotten one. Do I think I would have gone on to two or three? No, nah. but I think I would have gotten one. To, and then also me having the HBCU experience, you know what I mean? Like that was very important to me. So I think I would have maybe gotten one, but like two or three, I probably would have, probably would have nicked that, but. Yeah, I mean, cause I, cause like I go, I go back and forth. Cause I mean, I got 1.5. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because you, cause your boy got, uh, you know, I, I was doing a grad school thing and then the grad school thing decided that they weren't, they weren't doing it with me. Um, right. But that's right. another story for another day. But yeah. anyway, I mean, but no, but that, but that's the thing. I'm not like, I'm not tripping on it because I remember I would go in, the, in classes and then if I'm aspiring to do what my professor is doing, they weren't doing a good job of making it look attractive. They were coming to class with bags under their eyes, looking exhausted, mm -hmm. with papers disheveled. And I'm like, mm. mm -hmm. I mean, y'all, right. 
But I think it's a process for me. So I think that if I wouldn't have gone to Hampton, Mm -hmm. then I, and it's like, it's just like how everything works itself out. So yeah, what am I doing now? I'm only going to say in in reality, um, do I need a degree? I'm going to be honest as a black female. Yes. Mm. Um, as everybody else who owns a 7-Eleven, I can't speak for. Um, but again, sometimes I have to work 10 times harder to get exactly the things that other people are already awarded. Um, so I will say that, yes, I did. But I think a part of it is the process for me. So if I wouldn't have gone to Hampton, I would have met all these people. So I wouldn't have had that whole Hampton support whenever I had the contest. So I think, I think it is a process of discovering things out and sometimes you have to follow the process in order to get to the end to see like what exactly is it um so if i would have known that then now yeah i think i still would have done it so that way i could have seen the process to get there sometimes it's not about the end result or the beginning it literally is about like the process that got you there and the process that like makes you into who you are yeah 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 i mean my 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 fa- my favorite speaker out there Inky Johnson, he says it's it's more about it's more it's more about the process than the product. So just uh-huh. what just what you said. And I mean, as I'm listening to you say it, it does make a lot of sense because going through the process, you have to learn so much, right? Like you learn how mm-hmm. to deal with everything. You learn how to deal with people who are of different cultures because you might have a roommate if you moved into a dorm that you don't know. And you right. might have a roommate who don't wash dishes and you gotta critically think and you do all these other things. And Okay. Okay, Allison. You win. Okay, you win. You win. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, man. But Allison, I I, I def- definitely appreciate, you know, you taking your time, hopping on today, just just sharing, just sharing with the people, right. just letting us know that it wasn't just no, it wasn't just no game. It wasn't just a contest that you actually put in some work, some real work, because I mean, I knew, I knew that you were a go-getter anyway, but you know, I think it's it's dope just to see the process behind mm-hmm. the, the the process behind the end product. Ballers, we wanted to make sure that you all took advantage of this opportunity. That's right. This episode of Beyond the Ball is sponsored by our new book that we just dropped, completely a free resource. And the book is entitled Seven Ways You Can Effectively Support Your Student Athletes for Career Readiness Post-Graduation. That's right. Seven ways that you can effectively support your student athletes for career readiness post graduation. So be sure to take advantage of that resource. You can go ahead to the website, go to bit.ly forward slash the number seven ways you can. That's right. bit.ly forward slash seven ways you can. Take advantage of this resource completely free. Download it for yourself and pass it on to a staff, a student, or even a coach that you know serve and supports student athletes, they will get great benefit. Now, back to today's show. I agree. I yeah. Agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's dope. So <laughs> so now I want, before I let you go, I run everybody through it. we got to run you through it. It's called the two-minute drill. Okay. And, and the two-minute drill is I'm just going to ask you a handful of rapid-fire questions just so people can just, you know, just get inside your head a little bit. And we have a little bit of fun, and then okay. you can wrap a bow on it, tie it, and then let you go on your way. So, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous. No, 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 no. Here we go. Favorite food? Oh, man. I love Mexican food, but my favorite food is pickles. By themselves? Like, how do you, how? That's made sour pickles. They only sell them in Texas. They come in a big old plastic jar with 30 of them in there. And you eat it. I eat it with red and pink now. No, no, no. Red and pink starburst. Mm, okay. Judge you put yourself. It, you next. put it in the middle? <laughs> you put it in the middle? <laughs> no. I take a bite, let it hit the roof of my tongue, flatten it out, and then I eat around the pickle. And then once I get around, I eat the middle part of the pickle, and then I chew the starburst at the same time, and then I take another bite. A- I, feel, I feel like I remember you used to do that. I promise. Oh, no, I've, I've, done it, I've done it since I was literally probably eight years old. So yes. Oh perfect. wow. <laughs> Hilarious. What's the What's the last book you read? 
Okay, that's not fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently reading a book, and I gotta, I gotta, I guess around here somewhere, and I try to read a chapter at night. But the last book I read, unfortunately, I haven't read a lot of books. Um, you know me, I go to work all day. Um, and when I come back, I literally just want to do the TV talking. That's fair. So with that being I said, do have, I do have um, uh, Michelle Obama's book in queue for one day whenever I get some extra time on my hands. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, what's your what's your go to Netflix show of preference? Currently? Okay, my go to Netflix show of preference is going to be uh, The Office. Anytime I'm just sitting on the couch and I'm chilling and I'm about to fall asleep, I put on The Office. Um, if I start drinking, then I'll watch Moesha. Hmm. Why? Why do you have to start drinking to watch more? <laughs> it's newer. I don't know. It's it's newer on Netflix. And I don't know. Just when I'm drinking, I tend to like just want to watch something like funny and slightly relatable. Mm, I can't really relate. To the, I guess I could relate to The Office, but The Office is such an older show for me that I kind of just sit there and just watch it. So I, fall I mean, there's there, there's some relatability in The Office, but mm, for may, may, maybe not as much relatability for us as others. Anyway. Um, yeah. Exactly. Most underrated cereal. Well, I mean, I don't think it's underrated because everybody loves Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh, <gasps> Mini Wheat. Okay, so my mother and I, since I was a kid, my mother has loved Mini Wheat. So those, those cube ones with the sugar on top, I literally buy them every week and I just put them in a bowl and I eat them dry with no milk. Mini Wheat, underrated. And you, and you eat them with a spoon? me that it's underrated. And you eat them with a spoon? No, just put them in a bag oh, or put them okay. in a bowl and I just pick them up and eat them. Okay. Okay. Even, even though I feel like you kind of answered this question earlier, but if you want to share something additional, feel free. But a, one tip that you want to share with a student athlete, one tip. Ooh, a student athlete is <laughs> you're going to make it through. Okay. <laughs> like, being a student athlete is very, very hard. You're either one traveling two hanging out with like your friends, hanging out with like the opposite sex and you, you feeling yourself. Um, you can use you. I plenty of times I I told plenty of lies about being on a trip and not being able to finish homework and have gotten plenty of extensions. <laughs> um, but but <laughs> just know that like I don't know it's something about like being a student athlete that it makes it just a smidget bit harder. Um, even if you're, even if you're super smart, it just makes it a smidget bit harder than everybody else. Just know that you're gonna get through it. Um, and then also my other tip is have a backup plan. Like mm. have a backup plan. Even, I mean, as, uh, uh, most athletes either tend to do sports management or something as their backup plan, but make sure you have like a concrete path of something. That's good. That's good. We're yeah. not all going pro, trust me. Did you think you were going to go pro in golf? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, golf was a means to an end. And that's what my mom always told me in college, like, just finish it out. Like, that's all you, we're just trying to get you through school. But no, I never, no, I never thought I was going pro. Because <laughs> Because did did you didn't you just play basketball too? No, I could have gone pro there. No, I'm just kidding. No, I did I did play that. I did play basketball and I did play golf. I knew I was not going pro in any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that from day one. I was just trying to get through college. Well, hey, I mean, there there there, there it is. There it is. and and just like what you're saying about the homework thing. I, so I was in a position like that once, right? Like. I knew we had to test. I'm like, oh, nah, we got a away game. I'm going to hop on this bus. We're going to leave. I'm not going to worry about taking this test. And then the roads iced over. And then my coach said, y'all should go to class. Mm -hmm. And then I was so unprepared for the test. Well, this is why you should have gone to an HBCU because they would have understood. <laughs> <laughs> and giving you a second chance. <laughs> oh my goodness I'm, I'm 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 so done i'm so done so you you made it through the last question i have I, I just like to ask this question it's a bonus question but who would you like to see me interview on beyond the ball next Ooh, i don't know i have so many different people um there's uh jesse washington who does um the he has brunchaholics um he owns a brunch they do the soul food burrito there's my homegirl, Tashara Parker from Channel 8. Oh my gosh, there's just so many other people that I would just like. Yeah, but those two for sure. They're both characters. Okay, okay, <laughs> dope. Well, I mean, if you, if, 
I mean, if you hook it up, you connect me. I mean, we 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 definitely we definitely can make it happen. We yeah, for sure, happen. for sure. Already, already. Well, I appreciate you taking time and and, and oh, hanging out. Oh, one more. Uh oh. LNG Learning Solutions. They're 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 new. They started a company. I'm a girl I went to high school with Lauren Houston um, and her friend Gabrielle. They started um, a company that while people while parents go to school, I mean while parents go to work, their kids can come into their facility and do online learning at their school. And I, mm. they've actually got a lot of students now. So, um, and they're able to like space them out and do, um, you know, be able to follow COVID rules, um, creating a safe environment. Um, but I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of them. It, it kickstarted fast and they, they were able to get there fast. So. Super cool, super dope. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely gonna check out everybody that you said. I'm, I'm just gonna look them up to see what they got going. And I mean, I'm, I'm always excited to, you know, find find new hidden gems and find hidden gems <clears throat> as a whole. But Allison, I appreciate you stopping by, like I said, in the virtual studio, yeah. just sharing with us. Yeah, of course. Uh, eventually I'm gonna make my way out there and I'll, I'm gonna purchase something from both of your stores, okay? Please do, you can just walk across the street. That's what I do. Yeah, 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 most <laughs> definitely, most definitely. But everybody out there, listen to everybody out there uh, who rock with this episode, I would encourage you all just to, you know, ping and shoot Allison a message. Allison, where can people find you? How can they connect with you? I didn't even get to oh, that. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the most important part. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at the number seven, spell out 11, underscore Ray, R-A-E, Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N. You can find me on Facebook at Ray Lawson, underscore seven, spell out 11. You can find me on Twitter at Ray Lawson, underscore the numbers seven, 11. Um, and then also you can come by the stores at any time, 100 East Interstate 20 um, and 700 West Interstate 20, both located in Arlington, Texas, on the corner of Matlock and 20. Dope, dope, dope. So now that y'all have all the information, be sure to send her a message. <clears throat> let her know how she inspired you with this episode. Send her a message. Just, just let her know what you took away. Or if you're an HBCU grad, you're a current HBC student, you're an HBCU alum and or supporter then yeah. just just be like what's up just be like what's up so yeah 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 there, <laughs> there it is there it is and ballers everybody thank you once again for rocking uh i'm jonathan jones and this is beyond the ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree.